I'd like to call the meeting to order. If everybody would please stand for the pledge. Good evening, Patty. Will you please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Litt? Here. Vice Mayor Reed? Here. Council Member Woods? Here, ma'am. Council Member Marciano? Here. Council Member Tinsley? Here. Are there any additions, deletions, or modifications? No, ma'am. Okay. Next, we have presentations, and I would like to call Police Chief Clint Shannon to the podium. Good evening, Madam Mayor, uh, Madam Vice Mayor, members of the council. Uh, for the record, uh, I'm Clint Shannon, your Chief of Police. I wanted to uh, bring your attention to uh, some people we're real proud of tonight, um, the Palm Beach Gardens Police Explorers. Uh, during the week of July 18th through July 24th, 2021, the, police, the Palm Beach Gardens Police Explorers attended the Florida Association of Police Explorers annual state competition in Lake Mary, Florida. Uh, our explorers uh, competed in numerous uh, law enforcement related scenarios against 20 different explorer posts from throughout the state of Florida. The competition was very challenging as each competing post, they were not aware of in the types of scenarios that they were going to receive until they arrived at the locations that the scenarios were being held. Our four explorers that competed in the state competition were Gabe Fontanez, uh, Nick Badalotti, Justin Boyan and Ryan Ar Arbid. <laughs> if I didn't mess those up. But they made the police, uh, the, North, the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department, our city, very proud. Uh, they achieved a first place overall win in the, in the state competition. Additionally, the explorers attained individual per first place rankings in the crime scene uh, competition, crisis intervention, an in-progress burglary to a business scenario, and they received third place in active shooter response and traffic stop scenarios. Further, they achieved second place overall in the team pistol competition and third place in the explorer shooting competition. Uh, a special thanks to Officer Jason Sharon and Officer Bethany Abrera, uh, and also Sergeant Geneve Labossier, uh, and, and all of the members of our department. There's a lot of our officers that, uh, that pitch in and they help train our exceptional explorers for weeks prior to the competition. So it's a, it's a great honor for our entire department, not just our explorers, but uh, we could not be prouder of their accomplishments. I mean, they are, Palm Beach Gardens Police Explorer Post is well known throughout the state of Florida. And I gotta tell you, these individuals set the bar for the rest of the posts throughout the state. Um, we, ha we have a lot of explorer posts throughout the state that frequently talk to us, uh, they're jealous. So. Uh, so we're really proud of them. So we wanted uh, to make sure you are aware of what they were doing. And this is just the trophies they won this year. We're running out of space at the police department for all the trophies they've achieved, but uh, we're super proud of them. They're a, a great bunch and our officers, uh, we're really proud of them because they're the reason that the explorers are here tonight. So uh, just thank you guys for everything you're doing. Thank you.
Okay, so next is comments from the public, and I do not have any comment cards for anything not on the agenda. <laughs> so we will move to the city manager report. Ron, do you have a report this evening? Okay, so we will move on to the consent agenda. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. passes 5-0. So okay. So before we move on to the public hearings, I would like to address some of the comments that were made about our budget and budget process since our last meeting. Uh, these are things that many residents may not be aware of or may have forgotten during this crazy time during the pandemic. It's important to keep in mind that not every city is the same, that each city faces its own challenges and differs in the way that they handle those challenges. Because Palm Beach Gardens is such a well-run city with a stable millage rate, we have been able to build up three different kinds of financial reserves, unassigned, budget stabilization, and economic development. These reserves totaled approximately $53,500,000 in last year's budget. That included $26 million in unassigned reserves, $5.2 million in budget stabilization reserves, and $2.3 million in the Economic Development Reserve Fund. These reserves enabled us to balance our budget this year without the use of Recovery Act funding. Unlike cities like Delray Beach, who had to use that first allotment to balance their budget. Because of these reserves, we were able to respond to the needs of our businesses and residents early on in the pandemic from our own funds. This includes $1.3 million to our businesses in the form of a grant program and $300,000 in cash food support for our residents. These funds were helping our community during the pandemic way before we received any CARES Act funding and cannot be reimbursed with CARES Act or ARP funds. When we did get CARES Act funds, we immediately set up a mortgage and rent assistance program, allotted money to resident home repair and upgrade program, and have set in motion a program to bring clean drinking water to one of our neighborhoods. So far, the city has spent $191,300 in mortgage, rental, and utility service relief for its residents. An additional $195,079 in funds are still available. If you need help with mortgage or rental assistance and are a resident of Palm Beach Gardens, go to the city's website at www.pbgfl.com and type in mortgage assistance to get the details and the application. The city has spent $549,599 repairing and upgrading homes for Palm Beach Gardens residents of low income. There is $181,928 still available for this program, and it can be accessed the same way on the city website. In addition, the city is spending $1,202,173 to bring portable, potable water to a neighborhood that could never afford the necessary infrastructure and construction costs to do it on their own. The city has also identified $5,550,000 to incentivize workforce housing development in Palm Beach Gardens. Now specifically with respect to the ARP funds, other county and city governments are spending American Rescue Plan dollars on such infrastructure and other projects like playgrounds, parks, 
City Hall construction, balancing their budget, etc. These are things that we've been able to do in Palm Beach Gardens as part of our normal yearly budget. This would also include our stormwater maintenance repair and renovation program and canal dredging maintenance program, both started in 2015 and that are not assessed to the residents by fees as they are in other municipalities or with ARP funding as is being done in other cities at this time. So a key point here is the American Rescue Plan dollars are not a recurring source of revenue and therefore they cannot sustain any program except for a one-time or short duration benefit. They, unlike the CARES Act dollars, were intended for a city's use to offset shortfalls in revenue that the city experienced during the pandemic, not as a direct supplement to residents. Palm Beach Gardens experienced a shortfall of about $2.1 million in revenue during the allotted timeline. Revenue that would have gone to infrastructure spending, one of the categories allowable under federal law and what the ARP funds are now being allocated for. The city is not building a golf course with COVID relief funding. The city is spending American Rescue Plan dollars to pay for infrastructure for 115 acres of city-owned land dedicated for recreational purposes. This infrastructure spending would have to occur on this property if we were putting in any other type of recreational facility, park or playground, as other municipalities are doing with their funds. Why single out the intended use for golf? The city cannot build a golf course for $2.1 million. The golf course is expected to require a total of $16.8 million and is being financed by a $14 million non ad valorem, meaning not coming from taxes, bond that will be paid for by the proceeds of the golf course. These proceeds are expected to be in excess of $1 million a year, a hefty revenue source that will certainly be used to further enhance the residents' quality of life in Palm Beach Gardens, what we were elected to do, and another example of savvy fiscal planning on behalf of the city. I will reiterate that 2.1 million pays only for infrastructure, such as water, sewer, electricity, et cetera, which is allowed under the guidelines of the American Rescue Plan. Now, as for taxes, our proposed budget is balanced at the same stable tax rate that it has been for the past six years. The city is not proposing to raise property taxes. Property taxes are a function of both millage rate and property values. We are proposing to keep the millage rate the same, the part the city can determine. Now, while an area is attractive to buyers, property values go up. That's a good thing. What you want is a desirable place to live with great resident services and increasing value to the property that you own. The proposed budget provides the same level of municipal services Palm Beach Gardens residents experience today and expect when they move here. It also moves us forward in the areas of mobility, workforce housing, and infrastructure, and leaves us in good financial shape to deal with an unexpected natural event or emergency should one occur in this upcoming year. So at this time, we will move on, and will the clerk please read the title for Resolution 36. Resolution 36, 2021, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, adopting a tax levy and millage rate for the City of Palm Beach Gardens for the fiscal year commencing October 1, 2021, and ending September 30, 2022, directing the City Clerk to forward a certified copy of the resolution to the Palm Beach County property appraiser and tax collector within three days after its adoption, providing an effective date and for other purposes. 
going to open the hearing, and Alan is already at the podium. I do not have any comment cards on this. Um, Alan, do you have? Um, good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council. For the record, Alan Owens, uh, finance administrator. Um, again, this is a second hearing, required public hearing. Uh, before you tonight is Resolution 36, 2021, which adopts the millage rate for next fiscal year. Uh, that's the only change from the first hearing. Again, after that, we have Ordinance 8, 2021, which actually adopts the budget. Uh, Resolution 36 proposes the final rate at 5.5500 mills. Uh, it also identifies the rollback rate of 5.4253 mills and the increase over the rollback of 2.3%. Um, the balance, the budget presentation has not changed. I'd be happy to go through it again. If not, if council would rather, I can just jump to the required action after you uh, receive public comment and have the discussion among yourselves, if that's agreeable with council. Okay, are we good with that? Okay, all right, then I'm gonna close the hearing. And as I mentioned, we had no comment cards. So can I get a motion and a second to approve? Okay, um, Madam Mayor, there are, uh, under TREM guidelines, state statutes is very specific order of how we have to proceed here. So the first order of business is they require uh, to publicly state um, what the, the name of the, ta the municipality, what the proposed, the final millage rate is, what the rollback rate is, and what the increase is over the rollback rate. So the first order of business uh, staff is recommending a motion that the city of Palm Beach Gardens adopt a final operating and total millage rate of 5.5500 mills, which is greater than the rollback rate of 5.4253 by 2.3%. And after that, then we can move into adopting the resolution, mm -hmm. and then after that, the uh, ordinance adopting the budget. Okay, so we need a motion and a I'd second. like to make a motion. The first part, right? Right. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 36, 20. I'm sorry, oh. we, need, we actually need to. Read the whole thing? Read. No, the first one, we actually need to make a motion to adopt the, the, for the final adoption, adopt the final millage, final okay. operating and total millage. Okay, thank you. I'd like to recommend a motion that the City of Palm Beach Gardens adopt a final operating and total millage rate of 5.5500 mills, which is greater than the rolled back rate of 5.4253 by 2.3%. Is there second. a second? Okay, Carl's got a second. Okay. Um, and all, uh, all in favor? Oh, we have discussion. Now I bring it back for discussion. Yes, we have to bring it back for discussion. Is there any discussion on staff's recommendation? Uh, I, I'd like to say a few things, um, right. if that's okay with you, Madam Mayor. So I know where everybody stands, of course, because can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Is it okay? All right. Um, I know where all of you stand, obviously, based on our last uh, meeting. So. I do want to include my comments from the last meeting into this um, public hearing comments, but um, as our mayor uh, stated very eloquently, um, I want to say that I strongly feel that we should also give a little bit back to our residents, and uh, you kind of gave some points as to why. Um, I'm very proud of our staff, um, Alan and his team. Uh, they always been very conservative and fiscally responsible, and I'm proud of that. And I too am very fiscally responsible. Um, I've successfully managed uh, a business for 17 years, and I agree with all of you that this is um, one of our very most important jobs, which is balancing the budget. Um, but I do want to comment that uh, based on the history and as an example, um, in the past, we have reduced it, and I want to kind of paint a little bit of a picture, but in 2014, 2015, we lowered the millage rate from 5.74 to 5.67. We gave back to the taxpayers and again lowered it in 2015, and paying the debt, uh, which uh, in 2015, after paying the debt service, it became 5.55, which is where it is today. Um, and because of our uh, fiscal responsibility, 
Um, our unassigned reserve since then grew from 23 million to what it is now, which is 26 million. Not only did we prosper financially, we started an economic development program of two million. We grew our city's budget stabilization in 2016 from two million to over five million in 2021. And we recovered from a hurricane in 2017, which was Hurricane Wilma, all while growing financially and under going a slew of capital improvement projects. And at that time, our city wisely chose to pursue a revenue bond, pay for it uh, back um, from the one cent sales tax. Um, and I strongly feel it's time to give a little bit back to our taxpayers. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't try to encourage those to do, to do it, but I know where we all stand, of course. Um, it can be done if we work as a team. So I hope next year we can get to that point. I just wanted to say those few things. Okay, well, look, you all know where I stand. I've been saying the same thing for a number of years, and I'm going to be consistent. Um, everything you saw, Madam, said, Madam Mayor, was exactly right. That's why this city is what it is. But I'm going to challenge all of you, just, you know, we can have, and we have, all of the things that you stated, and we can still have those things with a minor reduction in taxes, which not only benefits the individual homeowners and small businesses who may not be protected by Save Our Homes from a tax increase based on millage. That's what progressive cities will do. And I'm not suggesting that we're not trying. I know we are, but I think we need to try harder. I think, generally speaking, people want to see a government that is doing everything we are doing and giving some back. And, you know, there was the challenge from the last meeting that suggested, you know, what city is doing it. As you said, Madam Mayor, there, every city is different. Every city has a different set of circumstances. We are held to a very high standard, and rightfully so. But I don't think that that should be an excuse or a reason to remain ultra-conservative in our budgeting processes. Every, finance, every, every reserve account that we have in the city is funded to a level that is you know, wishful thinking from most other cities. And that's a testament to what we've done here before. So I'm going to challenge you guys. I, I love all of you, and I love this city, and I will support it to the nth degree. Uh, we can uh, have a disagreement on what has to happen today, and that's okay, because we walk out of here arm in arm uh, supporting the city and the staff. But I want you to pay attention and, and really think about it, because next year, you know I'm going to come back and ask again. Um, and I think I'm going to have the right to do so. And I hope that all of you will be able to watch our budget continuing to grow in terms of res um, reserves and allowing our citizens and our residents to have the services that they want and are accustomed to having. So with that, I will vote no on resolution 36, is that what we have to resolution 36? And thank you for allowing me to make my comments. What? Carl, do you have? Okay, you I'll go. Um, well, I actually had the pleasure of talking to over 40 residences in the last couple days. Um, lots of constituents and lots confused from some misinformation that's been put out in the community. Um, it was actually turned out great. Um, once I told them that my position would be to stay on the 10 year vision that we haven't, I personally haven't voted to raise taxes in the last five years. We've been at a 5.5 .5 millage rate for the past seven. If we stay on the vision of the 10 year plan that we set as a council, then it's very possible that taxes or the millage rate won't go up in the foreseeable future. Um, I don't, um, and I, I, I don't agree with defunding the city and how it might affect anything by, uh, you know, with cleanup for hurricanes on a category four, category five. Um, the one thing that, that I did put out there that, you know, there were two council members that wanted to reduce the rate a little bit. Um, but it's to the tune of less than $2 a month or $20 a year. 
and um, everybody felt, the constituents felt, for my constituents anyway, um, said basically you can keep it. So um, I'm going to stick with the plan that we've all agreed on. We've all set the course. We are very educated people. Um, our boards that we lean on who do forensic accounting or whatever they do, along with our own staff that has done this for more than 35 years. I don't want to take the risk of lowering the taxes. And then in two years, whether I'm, if I'm here or not here, um, have to look at raising the taxes and something by just not staying stable and staying the course can then backfire. And then we got to raise the taxes. And I'm pretty sure that would blow the lid off the community. So, um, you know, I really want to say thank you to the people that called me because most of them were pretty cool about it. They were like, wow, I didn't even think a council member would call me back. And I just said, I go, why do you really think I go, I live here too. Do you really think I'm going to raise taxes? You know, I go, I live right up the street at Hooded Military Trail. Of course, I'm going to call you back. We're all in it together. So I'm staying the course as I have for the last five years. Thank goodness we don't, we are stable enough to not raise taxes. And I keep putting out there that um, we have no hidden fees. We don't have, we don't pay extra for water. We don't pay extra for trash. We don't pay extra. It's very straight. 5.55, that's what you pay. In North Palm, I, I had to say, you know, their millage, I think they, they brought it back to 7.0. I could be off a little bit, but their millage was higher than 7.0 two weeks ago, and they're bringing it back to 7 or something. But now they're raising a water tax, so or whatever it is, and they're not getting any benefit. So just over the corner, over Prosperity Farms Road, they're a lot higher than we are. So I think we're fiscally sound, and I am really humbled at the amount of people that put the work in this to help us make our choice to keep our citizens safe and secure and really, everybody I spoke with today really just liked the stability that we just weren't raising taxes. So I'm staying the course with that, and I will be approving Resolution 36 2021. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Carl Chelsea? Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, for your clarification at the beginning of this conversation. I hope everyone really listened to it. There's a tremendous amount of information in it. And again, our budget is transparent. It is fiscally sound. It provides a stable tax rate for all of our businesses and our residents. I was a business owner here for decades, and it appealed to me to know what my tax rate was going to be. And this council, way before I got here, I don't know who may have been here, set us, set, set us up for a 10-year consistent 5.55 millage rate for a reason. Our economic development since that decision has skyrocketed. Even during a pandemic, when we're being told right now that we need to give back more, we gave a million dollars, and I'm reiterating what I said before, I can drive up and down PGA Corridor and say, that, that restaurant received $15,000 from our city within, within two months of the pandemic arriving. That restaurant received you know, 5,000. That yoga studio got 2,000. That Pilates, whatever, all of it was invested in our businesses at the time they need it. That money came from the city. We have given back. We're giving over $7,000 to repair and upgrade homes. We're giving $400,000 in mortgage rental and utility service. I have shared our mortgage support again and again and again on social media and emails. No one's clicking on it. If I share something about a golf tournament, I get 70 or 80 clicks. Okay, so I'm not saying that's how I live my life. I'm not a great, I'm a horrible golfer. Um, but I understand our residents, when, when, with all this, <clears throat> with the publications that have come out recently regarding our tax rate, I got one email. And my email is everywhere, and I'm on social media all the time. And what also I found interesting is that there was also an article about the town of Lake Park where they held their meeting, and they decided to maintain their millage for the seventh year straight. That sounds familiar. Um, there was a brief discussion about it. And on they go, and they got lauded for it. Where here we are maintaining our millage, giving millions of dollars to our residences, to our residents, excuse me, to our businesses, all the 
time. We just don't brag about it. We do the right thing because it's the right thing. We put our heads down and we get it done. And I'm telling you, when I was handing out $250 public gift cards to hundreds and hundreds of residents, if I had a, the opportunity to ask them, hey, in a couple months, I might get to, I might maybe get to lower your taxes by about uh, almost $2 a month. Do you want that or do you want to know that when you're hungry, we can show up and feed you? And that is what we did. And I hope we continue to get to do that. If we lower the millage rate, we are guaranteed to start not doing our job. Our job on council is to make sure that we maintain 17% of our reserves. So it's 2022. Based on our forecasting in 2027, we're going to bump up close to that, keeping it flat. That's without a reduction. So do you want me to, if I'm lucky enough to sit up here a couple more years, that means a few years from now I'll be raising taxes. I don't want to do that. I would like our taxes to remain the same so we can continue to help our residents. We're keeping it the same. We are not raising taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as, as I've said last time, we are still in the middle of a pandemic. We are still in the middle of hurricane season. We had the ability because of our planning to help our residents when they needed it. Um, a lot of what I said, Chelsea reiterated, as did Carl, we have given back to the community. We will continue to give back to the community. But if we follow the tables that Alan and his team have set before us, we are not going to have the money to do that if we have a decrease. And um, I'm not willing to risk it. I mean, it's possible that we will, but the, right now, you got to go with the figures and the history. And, uh, and this is where we are. So um, with that, I will call for a vote on the motion that the city adopt a final operating and total millage rate of 5.55 mills, which is greater than the rollback rate of 5.4253 by 2.3%. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion passes two to three to, three to two. Okay. So now we have to move on to resolution 36, which um, do we have to read? We moved to ordinance eight, or do we have to read the middle no, one? No, it was not. They need to take up a motion and a vote on resolution. Resolution 36, that's what I thought. So Patty has already read resolution 36. So now what we need is a motion to approve staff's recommendation of a motion to approve resolution 36, setting the final millage rate for fiscal year 2021-2022 at 5.5500 mills. So somebody has to read that and make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 36, 2021, setting the final millage rate for the fiscal year 2021-2022 at 5.5500 Mills. Can I have a second? I'll second. Um, I'm going to bring that back for discussion. I believe we've had most of the discussion on this already. So if it's okay, I am going to ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion passes three to two. Okay. Will the clerk please read the title for Ordinance 8? Ordinance 8, 2021, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, adopting the budget for the City of Palm Beach Gardens for the fiscal year commencing October 1, 2021, and ending September 30, 2022, providing a conflicts clause and a severability clause, providing an effective date for other purposes. Okay. I'm going to open the hearing. Has anything changed, Alan, on, since first reading on the budget? No, ma'am. Okay. Does anyone need any presentation from Alan on anything? No. All right. We have no one wishing to speak on this, so I'm going to close the hearing. And I need a motion for it exactly as it is written on our screen. I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 8, 2021, as presented on second and final reading, adopting a budget for fiscal year 2021-2022. OK. 
And I have a second. I will second that. Okay, I'm going to bring it back for discussion. Is there any discussion particular to the budget itself? Well, once we've set the millage, um, this is kind of a formality, so. Okay. Um, hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mars, I didn't hear. Yeah. I, okay, motion passes 5-0. Moving on to Ordinance 10, second reading. Will the clerk please read the title? Ordinance 10, 2021, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, amending Chapter 78, Land Development Regulations, at Section 78-191, Outdoor Seating. To, re to revise outdoor seating regulations, create an outdoor seating parking rate, and provide cross-references, amend Section 78-345, number of parking spaces required to revise restaurant parking rates, providing that each and every other section and subsection of Chapter 78 land development shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date for other purposes. I'm going to open the hearing. Has anything changed since first reading? No, ma'am, there are no changes. Okay, does anyone need another presentation or have any questions on this? I just want to formally thank Martin for all the hard work he did. Thank you so much. I know it took a lot. Um, okay, I'm going to close the hearing. Can I get a motion and a second to approve? I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 10 2021 on second reading. I'll second. Okay, I'm going to bring it back for discussion. Any discussion on the outdoor seating? Just a quick question. Has there been any comments from any of the business owners or restaurant owners in the town since first reading? Okay, thank you. No, no comments, sir. Okay, so hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 5-0. Okay, dokie. So moving along... Items for council action discussion and items for interest. I have two very small ones before we, I move on. Um, the Literacy Coalition, in conjunction with the League of Cities, has their Read for the Record Day every year, and it's always so exciting for staff to go to Riverside to, to read to the kids. Um, because of COVID this year, again, it may not be possible. Um, it is October 28th. We still have some time, but of course we would not even think of it if, if it's not safe for the kids. Um, they are doing a contest among the cities, small, medium, and large cities, for the number of kids that you can reach by read, the rec read for the record. And uh, many of the cities are going with a virtual option. So we do have another avenue to pursue if we want to attempt to maybe each of us read to a class virtually at Riverside if we can't go in person, if that can be done. And uh, Vice Mayor Reed has been working with the Women's Club of Palm Beach Gardens. Um, they are going to try and reach out to the elementary schools uh, to do the same thing, uh, some kind of a virtual program. And I've agreed to participate with that. And if anybody else wants to come on board with that, um, we can kind of boost our numbers through the Women's Club as well. Today we had our League of Cities general membership meeting. Uh, Nick Uren from the TPA spoke. I won't talk much about it because Nick will be here to give the presentation next month. Um, it was all about mobility and uh, the county, the municipalities, and, and working together to make sure that um, we can move forward. Uh, with our mobility plans. So, um, and also we will be hosting the League of Cities at Sand Hill Crane next month. So that's exciting too. So, um, anybody else have an item for discussion or interest? Anybody else? Anybody go to FBNL? Chelsea? I'm going next, I'm going in October, October 5th. Yes. 
Go ahead. Yeah, three of us got to tour. Oh, I did do a tour, and I want to thank Rim Bishop and, and the staff at Seacoast. I had an amazing tour of the Seacoast facility. And as I said, started my, my talk earlier about every city is different and one size doesn't fit all. We are so lucky to have Seacoast here and to be a part of, of what they do and and our, our water stability because of what the city has worked with them on and what they are able to do at this facility puts us in so much better straits than so many of the other cities uh, with the water situation that they're having. Um, so if you haven't gone, it's a, it was a great tour and I thank Rem and the staff for that. So I, need to do I that. guess moving on to Max. I have a brief 80 page PowerPoint to present to you. <laughs> no, I don't have anything. Okay, well, in that, in that case, um, I'm going to adjourn. <laughs>